Hey guys, what's up? We're back with another podcast this week. I have the Easy Baked Boys joining me. I got to sit down with them when they were in Denver, Colorado for their headline show at Cervantes. If it was not sold out, it was right there because it was hot and sweaty and packed and everybody was grooving and it was just so cool to see these two individuals fully succeeding after years of dedication to their music and the vision and building up the beat culture and putting on so many of their friends along the way. Definitely a, you know, everyone feast, feast over famine mentality. And it was so great to catch up with them. We both started our projects in Orlando. I remember watching the Easy Baked Boys play in kitchens and just these super crazy underground, unconventional venues when, you know, experimental bass music and freeform bass music was just really getting started. And Orlando has just been such a hub for so many incredible artists in that subgenre to really take off and just kill it. They played the hugest stage at EDC, Orlando last year, which was a hometown show for them. Biggest festival we have in the state of Florida. They've played Okeechobee, done takeovers at Okeechobee. They have now started to take over nationwide. They're doing an incredibly large headline tour to support their newest album released, Intertwined. And that album is just a kicker and everybody's got to go check it out if you haven't listened thus far. I had a great time talking to him. We had a few special guests stop by. So make sure to listen to the whole podcast episode. As always, these episodes are available ad-free only on my Patreon at www.patreon.com backslash this is Lizzie Jane. We have a lot of fun, cool content stuff over there. So make sure to click the link below in the description and go and check it out. Yesterday, I released a collaboration with Figure called Take Control. Literally like a year and a half in the making. I premiered it last year at Lost Lands on the main stage. I'm so happy for it finally to be out. So I do have that linked below. Go take a listen. Let me know what your thoughts are. Tag us on the stories. Tag your favorite podcast. Tag my guests. Tag the Lizzie Jane podcast. Tag at This Is Lizzie Jane. If you love what we're doing, if you support what we're doing, and if you want even more growth. Without further ado, um, I hope you guys are having a great week. It snowed last week in Denver. My dog saw snow for the first time. It was so amazing. I I feel so blessed to live here. And I'm just super excited to continue popping out these podcasts for you with a multitude of guests that we have coming on the show. I hope you guys have a great week. I will catch you next time. This is Lizzie Jane and you're tuning into my podcast with Easy Baked. The show today was brought to you by Vitaplur E Boost Gum. With no pill to take or powders to mix, Vitaplur E Boost Gum is a first of its kind energy rave supplement that provides magnesium, electrolytes, and antioxidants while you chew. Vitaplur is the perfect complement to my active lifestyle, whether it's at the festival, on the road touring, or hitting the gym. Chew Vitaplur and dance with confidence. Use code Lizzie Jane for 10% off any order. How's it feel to have the album out? It feels uh, incredible, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it feels crazy that it's been two months. Yeah, it's surreal. Is that, honestly. Isn't that wild how fast time just like moves? I know. The time leading up to it is like dragging on and then you get it out and it's just like boom. Yeah. So I, so how long would you say that you guys were working on the album? I'd say like two years. Yeah, two years, yeah. Oh my god. Before COVID. Like it's yeah. like actually started like right before but i feel like everybody has those songs where you're like you you come up with the idea and you like have this like yeah and it kind of sits theme, yeah and it just sits yeah and then you open it and you work on it a little bit and then it sits yeah. again and a lot of those album tracks were very much so tracks we just kind of like chipped away on we're like okay this idea is very solid and it makes sense in this project because like we were trying to like just be pretty intentional with each track we were writing like this is gonna go on the album stick with that rock with that Absolutely. And and it's so crazy to see how far you guys have come since playing in those kitchens know, when right? everybody was in full sale. Right in the den and throwing fucking... their money away. Yeah. It was just it was just <laughs> literally that though. Literally that. Did you guys I forget, did you guys go to full sale? No, we didn't. Okay. No. So no college. 
You guys aren't from Florida, though. No, not like not a, we weren't born in Florida. Region. We weren't born in Florida, but we've lived in Florida for since I was like 10. 20 years. Okay, yeah, 20 that's years. that's fucking crazy. And you've been in Orlando. Yes. Or that's, like kind of. It's Claremont. Yeah. It's like right to Orlando. So uh, the the creation of Easy Baked, I know you guys were like childhood friends. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And did you guys just like come up in the scene together where you were like a fan of this music and like, how do I do this? Or was it more so... I want to make this shit and I'm going to do this and I'm like a teenager. It was more so we like came up together in school and like just being friends and then like getting yeah. into shit together and then we got into music together. Like we got into electronic. I think he kind of got me into electronic music. He showed me like this. It was like a, it was called like music, M-U-S-I-G-H. Music. Music yeah. with a music blog and it was like before like SoundCloud. It was like, like the people, UKF at the time. UKF. Oh like, man, yeah. yep. And that kind of, yeah, kind of sparked interest. And we were like both together, like, okay, like we love this. And we were going, we started going to shows. I think our first show was like Zed or Adventure Club or something. And then we saw Flume. We're like, okay, like we want to do this shit. You go down the rabbit hole. And yeah, then slowly, all of a sudden, yeah. slowly. Yeah. Start going we to had like ideas. We knew we had ideas and we yeah. like, we would hear like these big, big songs and like they would have like crazy fills. And I remember one of my biggest inspirations was like, I feel like I could make minimal music using sounds that people use as fills, like yeah, yeah, and just like take that and like make music off that and just get really minimal and weird. But that's exactly what you guys have done. Yeah, you know, and it and grew so hard out of Orlando. Yes. Oh my God, it's so crazy because it's like not only an obstacle in itself to try and really push forward music that has like little to no vocals yeah. and really is just about the beats because like yeah. i've always been a fan of hip-hop but like not for the art for like the the artists and the lyricists yeah, but because yeah. of the beats. the beats yeah and and i look at like you guys i look at the whole lost dogs crew i look at saruda i look at carmack and it's just sitting on this pedestal now and it's like growing and elevating and it's fucking crazy because i feel like we have watched in orlando specifically like the experimental edm and freeform bass shout out big mac yeah, legit. Shout out, shout out for like in like rooms like this for years, yeah. for years in basements, in kitchens, yeah. house parties. And, and now the shit's coming to the forefront. And now people are. Really and now you're on fucking it, EDC, yeah, EDC playing, in playing in front of like, like what, 20, 30 K yeah, people? Like 30,000 people. How was yeah. that experience for you guys? Like, hometown. So yeah, hometown, yeah. Which made it even more surreal because like we were on Vegas and then COVID happened and like whatever happened. So we ended up on Orlando and it was like, I feel like it worked out in. Like worked out better for us just because like hometown shit like the energy was like unreal like never played in front of that many people and they seem to like get it like you know going into a festival like that playing music we play it's like you don't really know if it's going to be received well or what these kids fucked with it so it was good absolutely i feel like florida's always put on for that like bass scene in general absolutely. for it to grow and grow and grow and it's like you look at all of like the crazy subgenres that have come out of bass music now and they're just like flourishing and i feel like so much of that shit was like propelled forward in orlando yeah definitely i agree and yeah it was face night i just it was tough like yeah starting out this shit like trying to like get people to actually take us seriously or just like get down with the movement but once it once it happened like caught fire quick i feel like i can't imagine quick. like the hurdles <clears throat> that you guys have gone over as far as trying to get people like really on board yeah. with the vision edm was like super prominent in like the orlando scene yeah mm-hmm. you know back when we were like just starting pretty much all across florida like tampa too yep. oh you yeah know? oh hundreds like of that edm you're from tampa right yeah i'm from yeah. tampa yeah. Yeah, yeah i was in uh, orlando for college and then i was there for like three years but i hadn't really started like my journey or my path in this like field yet yeah. I was doing stuff in like metal and Foley sound and I was just infatuated with what Orlando had yeah. as far as like a support system yeah. because it's fucking crazy and I look at Denver too and it's like seeing all these people at your show show up so early for like the support package crazy. and like even the silent disco you're like Damn, like it did not used to be like this. And Denver no. definitely did not. You, yeah, Denver's yeah, a whole other level Especially fucking too. Orlando. Yeah, Denver people definitely show up. Orlando, <laughs> like I remember back in the day, it's like people would show up, but it'd be like midnight. Mm-hmm. You know? Oh, absolutely. But I had um, Red Drum talk to him on the other day, and we were talking about how 
people are just really getting on board with like the support card because I know that you guys are like starting to build that like hard ticket headline value but you also play support on some massive shows and like it's crazy when you have that time where you're playing second or third and the room's fucking packed yeah. and you have that growth from a larger artist and like so much happens from that you know like mm-hmm. playing those those spots those direct spots like in front of a massive amount of people it's like a lot yeah. comes from that those, those spots are important yeah oh absolutely and and with the album with Intertwined it's so crazy that you guys said like kind of you chipped away at all the tracks because they do sound cohesive yeah they do have this like atmospheric like effects in these background noises like i've heard like car keys and the outdoor birds and like all that shit that you like really pay attention to where you guys take the subtlety and like put it at the forefront yeah and when you guys are like working together do you guys sit in the same room as each other? Do you send ideas back and forth? It varies Both. So, yeah. yeah. I think our best stuff comes when we sit together and start it from start to finish. Like, we usually catch a, a flow, but very much so, like, Andrew's a baby now, so our schedules have flipped and turned a lot. And, yeah, like, I start ideas sometimes. He starts ideas. Like, we're going to play one tonight that he basically wrote because we've just been busy. And he yeah. It. But yeah, it's, like, it definitely goes, it's gone the other way as well, you know? Like, well, I, I just feel like there's this, like, stigma in electronic dance music, which I get because we are producers. Yeah. But I do feel like the more minds that are in one room, like, you're going to get something better out okay. of it. And because, you know, you're you're punching ideas off of one another and you're getting all the stuff that you're necessarily not going to hear in a track exactly. that can really make it shine. Yeah, so, yeah. like, as you guys being a duo already, a lot of duos, you know, you have one guy who doesn't produce and one who just DJs. Yeah. You guys, I know, do both. Yeah, so, right. that just, like, opens the window. And we each have, like, our strengths. Like, Andrew's better at sound design. I think I'm better at, like probably arrangement and flow but but we could both do both like but yeah we, we i think we fill each other's gaps and we definitely just inspire like what you said it's like if you put a bunch of musicians in a room you're basically just putting a bunch of perfectionists oh, yeah, exactly. in one room a hundred percent very much so me and him are very much so perfectionists like. well that's that's how we've talked before is like when when i was working in like rock and metal there were only like you're working with two guitars, one bass, one yeah. piano, and you've got like 10 top lines where yeah. in like the doll, like whether you're in Ableton or Reason or whatever you're using, there's just so much shit you can do. Yeah, and it's sometimes deep, yeah. like intimidating because you're yeah. like, wow, can I make this better with the tools that I have to use? Yeah. And you're not just working with like what's in front of you. Yeah. What DAW are you guys in? Reason. Reason. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, my I God. Love you, I love that you mentioned Reason, though, because most people were like Ableton, FL. I started in Reason. Oh, no. I used Reason for six months. And then I think somebody was like, what the fuck are you doing? And sent me a free license <laughs> for Ableton. Everybody says that. So whenever we, whenever Why do you guys like Reason? Is it just the, the workflow? I know what's I really cool. you're just really used to the workflow. Yeah, and, and it's a visual... Visual. It's a yeah. visual learning. It's like hands on. You work. have that almost studio that you would yeah. see in person. It's like a life in the rap. patch bay. Yeah, like exactly. you have those things yeah. that you just don't have in Ableton or FL or anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a rack, fully like visualized right in front of you. And so I know that they just started, not recently, but maybe in the last few years, started incorporating like the plugins. plugins and everything. Yep. So do you guys work from resampling? Do you guys work from like how do you make your sound? I mean, at least just like kept in MIDI from I mean like okay most point and then we just a little bit reason. of everything yeah it's a little bit of everything we we we've always sample but I'd say that's definitely not like most of our sounds come from staying strictly in MIDI and writing it as much as we can like squeezing out as much of the MIDI stock sense stock yeah sense. yeah reason stock sense that well yeah. well it's also like you're using a very unique DAW for nowadays it's a unique sound yes exactly yeah. and and do yeah. you guys have like I know you said you guys kind of start ideas and you you can start in a room or send it back and forth. Do you kind of have a method to the madness or or is it just like <laughs> I'm inspired? I'm I high spot period. I thought about it lately. I don't really have much of like because I mean lately I've been like kind of getting stumped. So like my method could be like carved out a little bit better, but I think it's just like whenever it's there, it's there. And like if it's not there, we just still write and like there's just a lot of bad beats and they just you know they just. If yeah. I can like get past falling asleep, I get super creative when I'm high. Yeah. <laughs> if not, I'm like watching dog videos on my phone for like yeah, five yeah, fucking yeah. hours and I'm like, fuck, what that. are you doing with your life? I feel like formulas, you know, they're good to like get you going, but it shouldn't be like the entire framework of everything yeah. because I generally have a formula. you're going to grow start. past it. You know, yeah. at some point you're going to outgrow that formula. 
Absolutely. We're going to learn more and, you know, it just, you got to be constantly like adapting that strategy. Well, I feel like that's like life almost. It's like you have like a hamster wheel of like habits yeah. and then like it's good to throw shit in there that like you're not used to or like make you feel uncomfortable working in uncomfortable Absolutely. settings. Yeah, and stepping outside is like, yeah, pushing yourself to do different shit, like try different things, not getting too comfortable, but you know. A hundred percent. That's how your like sound like evolves. Exactly. Because like even right. though you guys have like had... I would say like you're you've been in the same like sub genre since day one. Yeah. You guys definitely sound like you have evolved. Yeah. And and that was the goal with the album. Yes. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, I mean, I listened to. Would you consider? This is your second album. This is our first. Yes, this is your first. Like, okay, because I know you've released like yourself, eight track things yeah, before. Along with yourself was a seven track. I'd say it was more of an EP, and it was just more of like a collection of tracks. Is where this was like an intentional body of work. Okay. You know, like we were like, okay, like we had the opportunity to release with Khan. We had a bunch of music we were sitting on. We we're like, all right, let's make make an EP. Like, let's do this. Mm -hmm. With the album, it was like, let's fucking make, let's start, let's start an album. Let's make a full body of work that has, like, you know, there's tracks that have four on the floor sections. There's tracks that are just like very vibey with guitar plucks and stuff. And it's like more of like not just a sound system. Yeah, you know, absolutely. And you guys did this pretty, pretty DIY indie. Right? Yeah, Independent release. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. was that... I know you guys have done a ton of work with Wakan before. We've only done one EP with Wakan. Only one EP? And we did another yeah, band. So, the have you guys pretty much just been a part of, like, the Lost Dogs Collective and yeah. released, like, underneath them a lot? Yeah. And, and then... more just collected. It's not a label. Yeah, not, so not a label. Like, Correct. It's yeah. kind of like you guys are all in the same lane supporting each other, exactly. like, giving it's each other it. feedback. Yeah. yeah. Which is, which is still super sick. A group chat. A big group chat. No, I've love it and yeah. did you guys kind of go about it differently rolling out the album because it wasn't on a label or did you I mean, just like do your had, thing i mean luckily we had just signed with new management shout out jordan over there um yeah and red they, lights he, and shit yeah he yeah. Was definitely they helped us just figure out a plan and um we definitely we, we rarely much show believe in like self-releasing like we want to like build an empire ourselves but like we have labels that we respect and we will continue doing that but yeah it's like we felt like it was our this is our first album. This is the freshman album. So it was like, this should come out on our page. I agree. Really for us. So it doesn't get like lost in a catalog and just kind of like sits on its own forever. And we're also in a time now where like, I feel like the more that people and aspiring artists see people like you independently release, it gives them the like confidence to be like, okay, I can fucking do this and stick to my own vision. And it may take a little bit longer, but like, at least you own your shit yeah. and like you're able to do with it what you want because yeah. it makes me so sad when I see a super quality release come out and like the the visual aspect isn't there or yeah. or the promo isn't there so or you know seem rushed. yeah exactly yeah. and and I feel like you guys took your time and it came out like I mean it, it's still getting super big support yeah. so like you can't you can't really ask for anything more than that and yeah. and how how the name come about i know it's the title track on the album were you guys is it stuff that was going on in your life is it because you love that first track so much i think well i think i named intertwine and i think it was just like andrew and i andrew just had a baby there was a lot we wanted to intertwine our styles from the baker's project which is like our more mellow bt project and it was just like i don't know the first we called it intertwine and then i remember calling andrew one morning i was like I got an idea for that, like for the cover and everything. I got an idea, like DNA strand, like blueprint of life, like intertwined, like DNA. It just makes sense. I was like so high laying in bed. I was like, this is it. This makes sense. Like, the best ideas like, come like, out. I like it. I like it. And then we just kind of elaborated on that. And it was like, yeah, like intertwining. We were intertwining a lot of things. Like our life was changing. Like Andrew, everything changed. Like after Andrew had a baby, like things were just like changed in many different ways. And yeah, it's we, both like literal and literal, yeah, figurative type shit. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, that's it's 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 super cool because like as an artist your fans and your supporters can kind of get this glimpse into your life yeah. obviously like through the music and through everything that's going on first off congratulations that's a fucking huge deal thank you yeah. i'm thinking i'm gonna be a dog mom forever but like it's a really <laughs> awesome you know. I, I, know. I know what's gonna happen so <laughs> has if you don't mind me asking has the dynamic changed a bit because you're a dad oh, yeah. now it changed 100 yeah, percent. there's not yeah. money because like now it's not like much late night i'm not and shit. it's like more of a scheduled like yeah i'm not just focusing on me anymore i have to think about this tiny human but you guys are also at 
Hold on, you motherfucker! <laughs> I'm doing a fucking hey, podcast. Sit down, down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, go. Dude, I didn't mean to interrupt. Who let you in here? Hold up, let me grab my damn beer. <laughs> Magic. Thank, Thank you, bro. Yeah, Thank you, brother. Agree. I have not seen Mitch Our since he moved here. here. I'm in her long, dude. I didn't mean to interrupt. We're podcast. talking about him being a father. This motherfucker so knows you don't interrupt podcasts. I know very well. But it's a huge accomplishment. It's but but you guys are at a point now too where like this is your full time job, you know. So it's, which is hard sometimes to maintain with this flight shit. So. I was literally just about to say that shit. Yeah, dude, and dad, it's hard. Flights <laughs> home, bro. You know about that. Yeah, daddy. I know these guys. There's a podcast. I'm We're shooting a podcast. I'm, I'm just letting you know. I'm so I I'm, I got the editing <laughs> skills on lock, but um, flights are like over $1,000 a piece right now. It's fucked. Not quite. Not that, quite, but, but like, yeah, if that was the case, if that was the case I would not probably be here right now. Oh, my God. Well, it's just like, it's, it's everything kind of building up, and it's going to be really interesting to see how... The industry continues to adapt, and and because yep. yeah. you got buyers who are struggling, and then artists who are struggling, and it's like you, you don't want to raise ends. ticket prices because everything else is going people on. People got to know that shit's not always just going to be you know sunshine and rainbows. Oh, rainbows. absolutely. We got to bring awareness to real world shit that's going on. Hundred yeah. percent, Mitch. What you got to say? I feel so bad. Oh, you're okay. <laughs> you're so okay. <laughs> Lizzie Jane podcast, best podcast on the planet. Say a joke or something. No, but we uh. Say a joke. I just did. We ran it. We ran it. We ran it. I think yeah. I'm gonna get out of your spot. Yeah. Bye. 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 Taboo. I'll see you. Bye. Taboo. I'll be seeing you. I'll see y'all in Oregon. I apologize again. I really, I feel really bad. I was literally thinking if you were gonna come tonight. No, I was like, oh, dude, I come every night, so that's just. Get the hell up. Bye. Um. Okay. So we talked about everything I wanted to talk about. What is exciting you guys for the future right now? I know you're doing a lot of headline dates. I know you're you're got a big festival season coming up. Yeah. And you guys have to be excited, pumped, I'm playing pumped. all this new yeah. shit from the album. Would you say your set right now is close to 100 percent original? Oh no. By choice. <laughs> yeah. By choice. By choice. By choice. Some yeah. people are we like could, gonna do we it. We could, but like, like no. after the album. I've like we've listened to some of our older shit and it's like we're better than that. And it's like now we just I've been on tour, so it's like we need time to sit down and really write new shit. And you guys have been doing that in between tour dates. Yes, we have. Yeah. yeah. Which and is it's like to the best of our ability, you know. It's like we do as much as we can, which is like once we have like a solid few weeks off, hopefully crank out another collection worth of music to play out while we're on here. But yeah. I'd say that the set right now is like seventy five percent original. 70, 70 awesome percent, yeah. no that's I mean I feel like that's honestly a pretty good ratio compared good. to most yeah. I mean, most it, it live DJ I'm, sets yeah. you that's know what I'm saying that's funny for me yeah I, I think 100% for us it's like probably a year a couple a year now when it's like all well well you still gotta we have can... that hype like you still wanna have like that section where you have that dynamic in your set and sometimes yeah. especially with you guys being a part of the collective <laughs> with you guys being a part of the collective you guys have so much like music to take from your homies exactly. to play out yeah. so it's like, like why wouldn't you support rents. that we got unreleased Chi tonight rents. we got unreleased something something we got unreleased Milano we got unreleased fucking Untitled it's cracked I thought with Chi's so heavy yeah how can you not oh, oh he's he's just he's, he's a goat. Uh, yeah he's an absolute yeah, he's goat insanely, um, before we go I need three pieces of advice for producers who want to do exactly what, what you're doing the beats stack up music and don't fucking focus on anything but just making music and and if and if and if the track doesn't feel good at first if you're halfway through finish it i think learning to finish music and just stacking up tunes without any like i want to release this i want to do this i want to be put on this bill with this song just make a bunch of music like thousands of songs and have fun my two pieces have fun and make as many tracks as you possibly can I love it. Easy baked. One. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Go, go, go. said three. I need yeah. three. I need one more. I'd say it kind of plays off that, too. Embrace failure. Embrace you failure. Yeah. Fail fast. The faster you fail, the faster you're going to learn. The faster Which just means grow. write fast. Write, not fast, but write a lot. The, yeah. the more you write, the faster you fail. The faster you fail, the quicker you succeed. That's a fucking book right there. Right? That oh. is. And there's a difference between failure and defeat. There's oh, a yeah. difference, you it, know? Yeah, you're not defeated until you surrender, and you don't surrender until... Ever. Ever. Just you know, you're the yeah, only one who's going to quit. The fat lady never stops singing. She's going to keep singing, right? That makes sense. 100%. Don't stop until the fat lady sings. Yeah. No, so the fat lady never sings. No. Doesn't the fat lady sing? I'm no, really trying to picture sings. it in my head right no, now. No, you don't want her to. You don't want her to sing, so she doesn't. 
Okay. I love the fat ladies sing ever. Fat ladies never singing, but beats are going down at, at Cervantes tonight. Denver headline, easy baked. Thank you guys so much for coming on. Cheers, Lizzie Thank Jane. You. She's a fucking goat. Thank beep, you for having beep. us. Beep. Orlando fam, you. Orlando fam. Yeah, Florida game. All right, Florida game. Thank you. All right, cool. That felt good. That uh, that editing experience is gonna be a lot.